Good evening to one and all. The School of Ancient Wisdom is happy to welcome all of you to yet another learning session this evening. We thank you for your participation and welcome all of you in the ongoing webinar series. As always, we would like to begin with our school prayer. Oh, oh hidden oh, light. Vibrant in every atom. Oh, hidden light. Shining in every creature. Oh, hidden love. Embracing all in oneness. Know he is also one with every other. Thank you. Today we have with us Dr. Sanjeev Nayak, who is an Ayurvedic doctor who has expertise in Nadi Pariksha, Panchakarma and also follows Kerala traditions. He is a certified clinical hypnotherapist, past life regression therapist, food and lifestyle trainer. Dr. Sanjeev Nayak, we thank you very much for your valuable time and truly appreciate it. We now hand over this forum to Dr. Sanjeev Nayak to engage us for the next one hour and request him to share his knowledge and insights with us. Thank you. Okay, so last session we had decided that we will not take any questions, right? Do you have any questions now? Anybody sent questions? Uh, as of now, I don't have any questions. Sir. Great. So we'll start with the uh, topic. Today, uh, I have come up with a topic called as Ahara. Okay, food. We all need food. We all eat food. We are dependent on food, right? So let us understand the Ayurvedic perspective on this topic. And then uh, probably we can take questions in a different ways, whichever ways you decide. Okay. So what is food? Yeah, uh, why it is called as food? Uh, Saroj, do, uh, do you have any questions? Okay. If you have any questions, kindly uh, put in a chat box or you can unmute and ask the questions. Uh, we can continue, sir. Okay, so I will, uh, you know, uh, talk about today's topic. Then probably if you have anyone has question on this topic or any other topic, we can take it later. So in Ayurveda, it says, Ahara Sambhavam Vastu Rogascha Ahara Sambhava. Vastu means your body. So, you know, the body and diseases are possible because of the food means but food is the main substance which creates the body in the same time if we take improper food it creates a disease in the body so that the improper food habits will be a uh, one of the causative factors or major causative factors to for humans to go through diseases or get diseases again nurture ahara samam kinchit baishajam means if the person is following proper food he doesn't require any medicines medicines are required only when person doesn't follow proper food habits and the food are better than any medicine baishajam means medicine okay so arogyam bhojana dinam the person who attained Health, arogyam, means who knows about food. This is what it means. So food plays very important role in our life. That is what we need to understand here. It gives us, you know, good body build, good color, complexion, state of mind, our emotionally balanced. The body, your food, uh, you know, 
doesn't work only on the body it works even on mind and emotions our personality is also built by food like food what we eat that creates our personality it gives us a strength stamina everything so we need to understand food in a very broader way means we need to understand it in a detailed way so why we need a uh, food it has to nourish us body our system our organs our you know everything the whole life span is dependent on the ahara or it's called as food how many times we need to eat when it comes i'm not going to very detail but basic fundamentals i'm going to discuss here okay how many times we need to eat so nowadays people say you have to eat small quantity multiple meals or some other person who wants to lose weight they say um what is that intermittent fasting all those things the way there is a you know rules and rules to take ahara or consume ahara same way there are rules to do fasting also we should know how to do fast the first rule is dvikala bhojana means there are only twice we need to feed our body means morning ones and evening ones that is where we need to consume food there is in in canada there is a, a you know kind of a proverb vandu sala undavanu yogi eradu sala undavanu bhogi moor sala undavanu rogi nalku sala undavanu etkondu hogi means the the person who eats once in a day he is a yogi means yogi should eat or consume food only once in a day the bhogis we are all bhogis okay we need to consume food twice daily and rogis means who are suffering from illness usually all suffering all diseases will have a indigestion so they we say he should eat three meals a day if anyone eats three more than three meals a day that means the person is going to suffer with chronic disorder because it will create many different types of uh diseases in our body so the human can eat only twice daily that is a recommended dose here two things will come then when should i eat okay do i need to follow any uh, you know uh, signs or symptoms in the body before i eat the one is hungry okay hunger is a emotion and hunger is not always kind of a real hunger nowadays we experience multiple fake hunger if i say when you are hungry you should eat then probably we will end up eating 10 times the moment we finish probably in few minutes we are, we may again start having a uh hunger feeling so hunger is a emotion so there are body will show us some you know uh, signs and symptoms where we need to follow it's called as clear belching it's called as udgara okay means we have to understand the previous meal is already digested already processed in our system okay when it digested we get a clear belching we feel you know good like the uh, was called as uttaha or uh, enthusiasm will get then proper elimination of urine and fecus i think first or second session we, i spoke about constipation where i said the number of time we eat the same number of time we have to pass fecus so if at all we are eating twice we have to you know defecate twice daily means the previous meal has to be processed gone through process complete process where digestion assimilation uh, absorption and defecation should happen then only we can have uh, the next meal then when we completely uh, you know feel the digestion process is over then we feel lightness in the body we don't feel heaviness we don't feel bloating in our stomach or abdomen okay then the last sign is hunger and thirst both should happen so when we have all these things then only we can have the next meal so what happens when we eat two meals in a day with a proper gap the body will absorb all the nutrients properly and nourishment happens in all the dhatus we say seven dhatus okay tasrakta mamsa meeda asti majja and shukra 
So all these dhatus were nourished properly because it's a stage by stage it goes. So when we when we have a proper time given to the food, morning we have we have solid gap till evening. So the food goes through each and every you know stages of digestion, absorption, purification. So the nutrients will reach the end point, the cellular level. So what happens? We are healthy. We have a good immunity as well as we do not suffer with diseases. So how to eat? The thing is, we should eat food in a proper gap and in between two meals, we shouldn't again eat something. If you do it, usually what happens, digestive enzymes will not be enough to digest those things. And the same thing, we shouldn't skip these meals also. Means, if I'm supposed to take meals in the evening and I skip this meal, that time the dhatu kshaya will happen. Means, there will be the body destruction because our body requires nourishment unless we are yogis. Because always the rules change, changes with yogi and bhogi. When you are a bhogi, our lifestyle, our uh, food habit, all are different. When we are yogis, it's different. Then when I said we have to eat like this, then what is the quantity of food we need to take? It differs. Okay, It doesn't go with uh, uh, our age, body weight and all. Okay, So it's like when you eat, it shouldn't disturb. It shouldn't make you feel heavy. It shouldn't make you feel bloated. It shouldn't make you feel uneasy. And you should, when you take food, you should enjoy this. Means when you are eating, the one point of time body says is enough. Okay, that is what you need because body knows how much to take inside. That is important. If at all we follow the one major rules during eating food, then the body will definitely tell us. It's like when we see food, the eyes will, or preparation sound will come to know whatever food is getting prepared. Eyes will come to know whatever food already prepared. The nose, the smell will uh, tell, tell the brain that now what is the food is getting prepared, wild dish. Then when you come, when you touch it, then the body will secrete accurate enzymes or the juices which is required for the process of digestion will be secreted properly. Then that means you are completely with the food. It is not that your mind is somewhere else. So that time your body will ask exact quantity of food because body is already prepared for that. Body requires only that much, that particular food. For example, dosa, today how much nutrients from dosa body required? That much only body will take. So if it's a chapati or roti, it will take exactly that much. Rice or ragi ball, it, it knows how much it need. It's, it's requirement. So it takes that much. So it's a, it differs from individual to individual. So there is no fixed quantity like this age, this body weight, this many grams of rice, this many grams of uh, sambar. No, not like that. It, body decides the quantity depending on its requirement. So we should ha having all this like this shouldn't create a discomfort, we shouldn't feel heaviness, all those things. And we should feel a taste in the body. Sorry, uh, tongue. So, and once we eat, we should feel happy, satisfied because it is actually satisfied our hunger and thirst. So these signs has to be reached. Before we eat also, we will follow we follow certain rules, means we should observe our body. Are we having that much of that many signs where I can take food now and I'm feeling hunger and thirst? Same time, when we eat also, we should stop when body asks us to stop. Okay. So, methods uh, while we're consuming the food. It is Usually, like in uh, Indian system, what we say, we, there are six rasas or six tastes. So, all the taste has to be uh, consumed every day. 
okay so uh, that is a main thing so we should start with always if you see in a festival or in temple uh, this serve start with start the food with uh, paisam or sweet because we have to start our food with uh how to say sweet okay and uh, sour and salt uh, food has to be taken in the last like that but we should have all rasas like shad raso upyukta ahara they say it should contain all those things and there are many things which is allowed to eat every day means throughout the year the food uh, when we take uh, when we you know it depends on the region and season probably uh, initial sessions i i spoke about this also uh regional food it, it plays very important role because we are genetically compatible with those food as well as those preparation method as well as the you know fruits vegetables and grocery whatever you buy those having the nutrients which is right for us second one is seasonal okay every season the nature changes At the same time the crops changes so we need to change accordingly but there are certain food which can be used or eaten every day like uh, what do you say uh, salt we need every day right like that rice can be eaten every day uh, there's something called shastika shara is 60 days uh, uh, rice that also can be Uh, eaten taken every day consumed every day like green gram or even um, black gram we prepare dosa idli south india every day every day right like that it can be consumed every day there is a call as healthy one then amla can be taken every day uh, that something barley can be taken every day and if we store uh, rain water that's one particular uh, you know method is there so that method if we use it can be consumed every day apart from this the banana can be taken every day papaya can be taken every day uh just this pomegranate can be eaten every day like that there are many so we should know which are the seasonal one which are the things which can we can consume every day so if you follow these rules then we can lead the healthy life uh even the milk ghee oil honey these are all comes in uh, this everyday usable or everyday consumable food then comes how we should eat okay it's called as we have to eat when it's prepared fresh it's called as ushtam hi bhunjiya matram means it's prepared fresh and it should maintain its that uh, heat prepared heat so that only has to be eaten why because it increases the taste taste buds will be means the, the fresh food have its own uh, deliciousness right that one it actually kindles agni agni means the digestive fire we saw it right so fire increased because of the heat so when it's a fresh is it digest second one is because of the heat it actually triggers the fire then it undergoes digestion very quickly the defecation people who are suffering from constipation they should never eat reheated food or cold food because it immediately increases the vata it blocks the flow so if you eat hot fresh food then the you know the defecation will be easy and it will uh, sorry decrease the kafa means the unctness in the body will go down then called as we should have proper unctness in the food it shouldn't be dry okay it's called as snegnam ashniyat means so when see you know we usually add little bit of ghee over the food like dosa chapati idli rice also we add little bit of ghee over the food right? that's the reason because that unctness helps to again it it actually kind of a fuel to the 
as to fire again is in proper moment of water on the initial stage of digestion will go to the last stage of the defecation also it nourishes the body for the joints for skin for organ the then it stabilizes the organs sense organs enhances the strength and gives good complexion to the skin. eating proper quantity of food i told you uh, like how we should eat right the same quantity we shouldn't eat more each prakriti means the the person body constitution vata pitta kapha vata pitta pitta kapha vata kapha all those things okay so when a person is depending on his uh, you know prakriti his body strength the place where he is living the season actually quantity of food also changes along with the season in winter if you see if you observe you will have more food and in summer you can't have more food because of the changes of the you know uh, season so with this when you follow all those things if you have a proper quantity of food it will be easy for digestion enhance the lifespan because we are not overloading and it again uh, you know helps in uh, clearing the all the cleansing channels more than that it's actually will never hamper our digestive fire if it is heavy if you are eating more then we are actually reducing the digestive fire strength so next time when we eat it doesn't digest it's called as ajirna or indigestion next next called as jirnam mashtyan i told you when we have to eat when the previous food is already digested what happened the previous food is already has gone through all the stage of digestion then when you are eating your all the enzymes are ready now they are fresh they are they can do wonderful jobs right the organs can do wonderful jobs so you are not giving multi multitasking to these organs these systems so when you have all the signs of digestion and you have food again it takes care of all the doshas the doshas it takes care of nourishes dhatus very well and creates a strength in our body and we will never suffer from uh, constipation then we shouldn't consume which is something called as you know incompatible uh, combinations or it's called as viruddha aahara uh, i will talk about that little later then comes we have to sit in a place which is very clean very hygienic you know uh, even though unused very clean even if you uh, check with the microscope there is no microbes or any uh, Uh, bacteria virus in the bathroom or toilet uh, which is completely unused new one we can't go there and sit and eat isn't it our mind says no the same way it applies everywhere we shouldn't eat sitting on the bed we shouldn't eat somewhere in the veranda we shouldn't eat standing we shouldn't eat sitting on the sofa okay it you know it's a, it's a it's something which you need it's a it's a essential part of your you know life is is absolutely necessary things which you cannot avoid means with that only we are living so such a uh, great process you have to be with it and you have to eat in a proper neat clean ambience because mind involvement is so much required so if it is not neat if it is not hygienic there some stinking smell is there you can't eat you can't enjoy the food you have to relish the food so it is always important same time the serving utensils as well as preparing utensils has to be very clean and neat then na ati drut means we shouldn't eat quickly fast you know nowadays kids now school started how do how how mom or parents make them eat they are already late uh, one parent is uh, helping kid to get ready with uniform with socks and shoes and uh, one parent is pushing food inside okay it is not a way it it leads so you know you what usually we have concerned that you know uh, uh kid will suffer but actually with this kid will suffer okay because it has to be eaten properly this will create a disease in kids okay 
what happens it doesn't go in a proper channel sometimes if you see if you when you are eating very fast you know you get that reverse movement isn't it so food will start flowing to upward movement so you have to avoid that same time na ati vilambit means very slow so when you eat very slow you know the secretion happens long time back and it's waited waited for some time and it's just stopped working and you are still feeding it it doesn't give a satisfaction of eating you might eat more food than uh, what your body requires and food will definitely become cold and that resulting in indigestion so both so na ati drut na ati vilambit okay then is called as you know we shouldn't talk in between we shouldn't crack jokes and in a, in a in a group we are sitting with friends you know we talk about something we make fun somebody cracks jokes we laugh our mind is involved somewhere else you know so when it's somewhere else it is cannot it cannot sense what is going in whatever food is going in so it cannot decide what of enzymes i have to secrete now what the next procedure i have to do so end up ending up having indigestion as well as many many diseases so these things means we have to when we are eating we are just eating nothing else no other activity not even thinking forget about talking and all okay just be with the food so that food can nourish us food food is our life so we have to give more importance if it is okay if we give, do not give important to our work but we have to give importance to food that is very much required okay so when i i said incompatible incompatible food uh, you know uh, viruddha ahara viruddha ahara is equal to we say it's a poison or you know slow poison or it creates toxins in the body it is like incompatible combination like you know even though curd is prepared from milk uh, you shouldn't eat mix mix curd and uh, milk together even though uh, nowadays this punjabi dish or some north indian dishes they uh, add milk to make it little taste better as well as make it thick so those things because we use sour food in that or sour you know vegetables in that then it's completely spoiled so this will create a uh, toxic effect in our body like eating uh, nowadays the marinate uh, meat with uh, curd okay any non veg having mixing with fish sorry um, when the fish egg meats combining with milk or curd it's bad for the health there are many uh, honey and uh, ghee which is uh, mixed uh, what do you say in a equal quantity is viruddha ahara it should be unequal quantity intake of uh, you know dry food uh you know uh, what do you say along with other things it means uh, very dry food had requires a different type of process and other food require different type of process that we have to uh, avoid hot and cold uh, you know we uh, sometimes eat hot food then eat ice creams so those are bad uh we mix the food which is like kind of a easily digestible food along with the heavy which is heavy to digest those things those things are also bad uh, we know uh, you know it's called as dosha viruddha uh, it's called as if i am pitta prakriti and uh, uh, you know i take too sp- too much of spices so that's like it's, it has to be avoided if i am kapha prakriti if i am eating too much of cold uh, food it's bad so or heavy or uh, unctuous food is bad okay those things uh like such foods we have to avoid and sometimes when we are preparing food also we have to Uh, we should know how much to cook how much to boil how much to mix all those things so if you do not follow those things then it will have a uh, negative impact in our body 
nowadays what we do we go to a juice center and have a milkshake okay so mango milkshake mango is sour even though it's sweet it has a sour taste in it so we take mango milkshake we get, we take um, pomegranate milkshake okay those are like absolutely uh, bad and uh, uh, juice uh, you know when we have meal we'll have some juices with the meals okay fruit juice combining with the meals or spicy food it's a bad alcohol with the meals it's a bad uh, taking bath immediately after food it's again bad so there are many things uh, consuming curd at night okay we usually ask people to avoid night because night is uh, like uh, curd usually takes more time for digestion and like its own it's a increases kapha in the body so we i would the people usually ask people to avoid curd in the night so having curd in the night is always bad and uh, i think previous sessions we spoke about uh, honey co hot water and lemon okay honey from for any reason you shouldn't uh, get heated it means uh, we shouldn't make honey heat it means we shouldn't add into any hot substances or from any means we should shouldn't heat it and consume it because it honey is like a nectar it loses its that nectar quality and becomes uh kind of a toxic toxic material okay cooked food again you you know recook it it's a bad refrigerated food means we cook it we keep it in a fridge again we over put in a oven or make it warm and eat that is also uh wrong reheated oil okay oil once we use we shouldn't use it these are all mentioned in these are not modern science what i'm discussing with you it's all mentioned in uh ayurveda heating the you know curd from any means buttermilk and curd we shouldn't heat it if at all there are some you know uh dishes in all states like uh, it's called as uh more colombo in uh, on um, tamil pulicheri in uh, malayalam and uh, in kannada they say majjige um, huli like kadi all those things required uh, buttermilk they heat it then there are some process to follow it so to remove the toxic effect of uh, the buttermilk when we heat it and the last one taking fast food anything which is to prepare quickly and in a bulk way it creates us bad health so this is what i can tell uh, i got a one beautiful reference uh, when i was you know decided to talk about this is called as way to live 100 years vamashai dipunjano shanmutri tripurishakaha स्वल्प मैथुन कार्य च शतम वर्षाणी जीवति ओके मींस द पर्सन हु टर्न्स लेफ्ट साइड एंड स्लीप ट्वाइस ही कंज्यूम्स फूड सिक्स टाइम्स ही पासेस यूरिन थ्री टाइम्स ही पासेस फीकस एंड स्वल्प मैथुन कार्य मींस ही इज ही इंडल्जेंस सेक्सुअल एक्ट इज लेस सेक्सुअल एक्ट्स सो ही विल लिव हंड्रेड्स ऑफ इयर्स means this is a secret of living 100 plus years healthy happy absolute living so this is about today's thing i made it very short ahara is my favorite subject i can keep on talking i can talk about each grains each vegetables each recipes many things so my most favorite subject is ahara so i started a discussion with ahara only every week i come up with a new new topics if you have any questions you can ask me now please just unmute and ask me is there any questions if not if any questions are there you can type it in the chat box
sir you are on yeah. mute you can ask you ask about anything as well as this today's topic because my uh, session topic is ask me anything sir uh, we see a lot of videos of uh, sadguru where they suggest to have this neem ball turmeric balls and uh, they say that is more sufficient for a body to get uh, energy and peanuts soaked peanuts is that so because i have not tried so i don't know if anything is excess it's a poison you should know it second thing everything is a beautiful science when i say something here uh, i i i i actually can give you the references from the samhitas from the ancient text okay i can validate all these things with the modern science because ayurveda ayurveda is a science and based it is a complete science okay ayurveda everything can be proved nowadays with the modern technologies okay Well, why we must do uh, upas on ekadashi? Okay, it's it's again uh, in our in our uh, samitas they they just say in a story way all those things. Ekadashi is eleventh day of your uh, what do you say uh, moon cycle? Okay, so uh, ekadashi you fast, dwadashi morning. you have a proper meal which consists of all six days as well as it talks about one uh, particular dish it has to be prepared then it's a dwadashi then you have three days trayodashi and chaturdashi then comes amavasya or purnima it's called as full moon or new moon our body goes through these cycles all the time our mind to definitely yes okay our body uh, you know uh, go through a complete cycle of transition every fortnight once when we prepare our system the body and mind both together that is we we have a absolute health 11th day when you fast you are actually cleansing your body dwadashi when you have the first meal in a properly prepared way when you have it it rejuvenates your body the rejuvenation will not happen in one single day it requires at least 3 days so dwadashi trayodashi and chaturdashi you, you rejuvenate your body and you are ready for transition full moon or no moon new moon the both the time we go through a complete shift for the shift you are ready your organs are ready your cells are ready your mind is ready your emotions are ready because fasting when you do on ekadashi a complete fasting the detox will happen not only in a cellular level it happens in the mind and emotional level also the person who follows ekadashi fasting will always grounded always calm and always that person will have a beautiful state of mind and emotionally balanced this is the effect of this practices uh in kathopanishad uh, the yamadoota they when nachiketa asked them why the people you why you are dragging people like that to the narakaloka they say these people are the one who hasn't uh, you know followed uh, ekadashi upavasa okay it means they are given that much importance the, the person who followed ekadashi upavasa he will be you know his ultimate uh, life he will have even this life and after life because he will be devoid of all the diseases sickness and suffering okay so come back to the the major gurus uh, there are many gurus there are all the astrologers nowadays they come on tv and they talk about some medicines some combinations no don't don't go with that every herb has its own side effect if you consume in a wrong way okay neem has a the greatest side effect turmeric when you take more quantity it has a side effect on the body it can soften your bones okay we should know how much quantity we have to take at the same time we should know how much to take everything has its own you know uh, uh, what 
to say rules to follow okay even though the elaichi tastes so good smells so good try to eat uh, 20 grams of elaichi powder what will happen you can't eat you start omitting for omitting elaichi is good you have a one seed in your mouth omitting will stop immediately okay you start you put more uh, you know this uh, elaichi powder in a payasam or kheer which is you know if you when you put less it tastes better it gives a good fragrance if you put more we can't even consume it in the same way the body will go through suffering don't go with that i am i am not here to demerit uh, sadguru or any gurus but one person cannot become everything you should know that okay follow doctors words whether you are following modern doctors or ayurveda doctors or homeopathy doctors take suggestion from them on that subject okay anything else no sir clearly understood thank you so much any questions today there are no participants sir huh? uh, sir it's raining here and there is no power okay so people uh, from uh, School of Ancient Wisdom only join, or you have uh, people from? Uh, no, uh, Navya Shiven is from, uh, not from school. Saroja, but is also not from the school, and Girija yeah. ji is also not from the school. Uh, okay, that's fine. Anyway, you made uh, make them, uh, uh, no, available this video, right? <laughs> so they will watch this in the comfort their comfort zone. Yes. Sir, any tips that you would like to suggest? I give you more, many tips today. How to be healthy? <laughs> Sir, what is the ro uh, role of uh, som? Okay, what? Why? Why do we eat som? Uh, for digestion. It is That's said all. that for it digestion. It increases. It actually takes out the you know uh, the food smell from the uh, oral yeah. oral cavity. It gives a it gives a good Order and it helps in digestion also, but we should know how to how much to eat. It has its own side effect. It means when we consume, see every herb has its own negative effect when you consume in a improper way. I don't say side effect; it's a negative effect of every herb. Even the rice has negative effect. Even the milk has negative effect. Even uh, uh, you know everything has negative effect. When honey, I said nectar, it has negative effect when we consume more. Or in an improper way. Everything has its own effect, and this one. Some spice comes as a one of the spices, Indian spices. Okay, sir. Okay. The pan and som together will help only in the digestion. Pan means you have to come. Bitter leaves. Yes. Bitter leaves has many benefits. So not only for digestion. Then bitter leaves is a kind of another wonder drug. It helps in digestion. It helps in neurological uh, neur neurological system, nervous system. It helps in muscular system. It gives a good stamina. It helps in defecation. It calms down your mind. uh i mean it it increases immunity it increases the sperm count it increases the libido it helps in sexual disorders so is that a bitter leaf does this yeah. many things bitter leaves pan yes yeah can you please elaborate about the muscular system and uh, central nervous system sir regarding the use of bitter leaves see bitter leaves by its quality by its uh, you know content in it it helps uh, it rejuvenating in your muscular system because it helps in your muscular system it definitely helps in the brain it it calms you down it increases the functionality of the brain cells because it has to penetrate the nervous system in that level it helps in digestion it helps in the assimilation 
it helps in defecation because it works in the water okay so when you eat it enhances the taste buds so uh, bitter leaves can be taken every uh, like every day after the food it's usually shouldn't take more also again you should know how much to take okay so after every meal if at all we are having two meals a day then after every meal you can have bitter leaves with uh, you know that what you call supari or uh, uh, arak kanat and little bit of chuna then little bit of uh, lavang elaichi the eatable comfort the many things you can add you can make it more tastier make it more um, healthier all those things there are many combinations which can make our life more beautiful okay thank you so much is there any questions from anybody or else even you can put it in the chat box yeah i open the chat box open we have one seven, seven minutes left so any questions regarding the ahara paddhati or any ahara that you have any doubts about it sir consumption of meat okay uh as per ayurveda okay what do you want to know meat in a sense uh, non veg how much they should consume everything uh, comes under the same rule i accept yeah okay it's something called as mamsa varga or mamsa uh, which prakriti person which region he is staying which season he is there depending on that is explained which meat how, who can eat okay the before that we have to uh, understand one uh, factor that are we able to digest those things you know when when i was talking about food how to eat all those things we should eat the food which we can digest it okay so uh, if at all we work we we start thinking about this you know the ancient uh, chaturvarna the four varnas based on their uh, profession okay not on casteism talking about based on their profession only two varnas are allowed to eat meat who are those kshatriya and shudra okay because they do physical work they 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 require muscle strength because the muscle they use muscle strength they use it to execute their work okay those people are allowed to eat so nowadays are we into that level so those meat what we eat is it in a processed or it is prepared in a proper way all this matters okay present in, in ayurveda they said okay but presently when we are eating we should one thing uh, if it is a uh, you know the meat is procured from the poultry farm then it's bad we know because it go through different stages you know ill treated chemical based food medicine loaded on those things then how it has been uh, you know uh, in a shop or you know how they how they killed it that also matters a lot then how they process that also matters a lot then after when we consume it are we able to digest those things okay meat our, our enzymes are ready to digest or if at all we don't get we can't digest that means we are not consuming the food we are consuming the poison the food which doesn't go through proper digestion means even though normal light food if you are eating during the indigestion then we create a poison in the body when everything is good the food is something which we cannot digest then it also create a poison in the body so with all this and the season is allowing us then yes it can be taken otherwise no Okay, okay, sir. Sir, will the ragi be converted to cholesterol if it is uh, not uh, burnt out? Like, if we doesn't do any exercise or anything, will the ragi be converted into cholesterol or a fat in the body? Not, not only cholesterol. If you if you consume more oily food and we don't do it, yes. Okay. we don't require oily food there are many food which have oil in it okay if your digestion is not proper not only 
not uh, doing workout if digestion is not proper then gone right there are not one single factor we can talk here the health is not based on one single factor health is just not based on exercise okay if you are not eating properly then we are doing exercise then we are we are abusing our body we are inviting diseases if you are doing improper diet and we are doing more exercise than inviting diseases at the same time if you are consuming more food and not exercising then we are inviting diseases so everything has to be balanced we should know what to do how to do that matters okay food matters water matters sleep you know rest matters activities matters there are many things is is like is a you know with all together we achieve health nothing like one you follow you eat every day you said na neem and uh, uh, turmeric ball everything will be healthy no definitely not there is no food or there is no medicine like that okay 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 then we conclude today's session uh, yes sir ah uh, that we'll again uh, come back next week with uh, another topic if anybody wants to know about this or question this will take next week they can write to us okay write to us or if you want to create a group kind of this can do it okay okay sir so take care then bye thank you so much we had a very good insights today about the ahara so we shall meet next week regarding the same topic and with a new insights and be prepared with the questions that you have to ask with the doctor thank you so much good day